Hi, I'm Shasta, a facilitator here at Future Crunch. And as we believe in intelligent optimism, we've disrupted our own scheduled broadcast for this month to bring you a coronavirus internet roundup. And the first thing that I'm pleased to be able to share with you is that you don't need to wear a mask. There's no evidence that prolonged use of medical masks has a protective impact on viral infection for healthy people. Masks are important for people that have a virus. They're for keeping the droplets in. You can see this reflected in many East Asian cultures where it's for a long time been considered polite to wear a mask when you are sick. It's a courtesy to others. Although we can see that tradition evolving as well. No, the best protection that you can get from a mask is to leave it on the shelves for sick people to wear. Now, this isn't a public health announcement either. They are available at the World Health Organization or at the Australian Government Department of Health website. Now, as always at Future Crunch, this is a common sense roundup of truthful information from reliable and open sources. Just like that homemade hand sanitizer you saw on Pinterest, you could have found all this information for yourself, but you didn't. I stress reliable because social media, as usual, is spreading misinformation and fear, but as a coronavirus novelty, with everyone working from home, our community standards are being monitored by artificial intelligence. And in the last couple of days, our robot overlords have been wrongly removing factual information about the global pandemic. So especially now, be sure to go to the source and don't just rely on your newsfeed. Now, people are obviously shitting themselves over coronavirus. They must be, because why else would they need all that toilet paper? Coronavirus doesn't cause diarrhea, and toilet paper isn't a useful part of two-week supply that you would need to wait out your isolation period. No, interestingly, we're panic buying toilet paper for the same reason that we're catching coronavirus, because we're animals. Novel coronavirus, so named because it's a new strain of a virus that we're otherwise familiar with. You might remember some of its predecessors like SARS, swine flu, and avian flu. These are severe zoonotic illnesses, means they've made the leap from other animal hosts to us, humans, an empathetic pack animal with the internet. So when we see another member of our pack stockpiling supplies, we catch their fear and respond in kind. Even if the pack member we saw was in China, Iran, or France, put that together with our hyperconnectivity, and even though we can see news from every corner of the globe, it still feels really close to home. But we can learn. So here are some statistics to maybe put your mind at ease. Of the total global COVID-19 infections, 95% of people experience really mild symptoms. 91% of people will recover. Only 5 to 20% of people develop serious respiratory complications and only 4 to 9% of cases lead to death. Now, you might have twigged that I've quoted some pretty shifty targets there, and that's because the facts themselves lead to shaky numbers. If you need symptoms to get tested and severe symptoms to get hospitalised, that can create an inflated death rate. Everyone who checks in dies. Yes, it's because the two are very closely related. Some reports will account for that, while others will show raw statistics. And you can keep that in mind when you're reading. Also, if many people have mild or no symptoms, we have an underinflated estimate of how many people actually have the virus. One thing is for sure, the soaring majority of deaths are in the age group of 60 and over. That's why so many patients died in Italy, while so few died in South Korea. They've got very different age demographics. If you're within 20 years of my age and you get coronavirus, you might not even notice. A doctor in Australia carried on practising because their symptoms were so mild that not even they as a professional considered that it could have been the deadly pandemic. Now, this should be taken in two ways. Try not to worry too much about catching the virus. Rather, focus on not being a vector and infecting other people. Wash your hands. It can sound too good to be true. But hand washing is still one of our best defences against transporting pathogens from doorknobs and light switches into your own body. In fact, 
The underwhelmingness of hand washing as a defence against a global pandemic might have been one of the reasons we were so ready to buy toilet paper and wear masks, because it feels more like doing something. It's probably one of the reasons why we were also ready to adopt social distancing too. Flattening the curve. Now, don't get mad, but the area underneath these two curves is quite possibly the same. Social distancing isn't about getting less people sick overall. It's about spreading out the time that it takes for those people to get sick. This tall peak means that there are people who can't fit into hospitals and can't get treated. Spreading out the time means that our social resources never become overwhelmed. Everyone who catches coronavirus and needs to be hospitalised, as well as all of the other regular sick people in our society, will have the resources they need to get treated. It's the reason that we are staying off aeroplanes, working from home and finishing those knitting projects which, ironically, has finally achieved what years of climate science agitation did not, a significant reduction in anthropogenic emissions. NASA has noted a dramatic reduction in nitrogen dioxide smog over China and Italy in the last couple of weeks. That's due to reductions in human transport and primary production that resulted from the quarantine disruption. It's ironic because in China, this smog reduction is estimated to have saved more lives than coronavirus has taken. It's ironic because climate change is already impacting our vulnerability to infectious diseases. And by 2030, climate change is forecast to cause an extra 250,000 human deaths per year. That's one to two orders of magnitude more than coronavirus. This proves that while we still have bigger problems than COVID-19 to tackle, we also have the power to have a meaningful impact on them. Tackling climate change is not outside of our grasp, but nor should it stay outside of our concern. But if you still need to hear someone very important and responsible tell you, wash your hands like your life depends on it, go and watch Alana Sheikh's TED Talk. She's a global health expert and the author of this catchy title, What's Killing Us? a practical guide to understanding our biggest global health problems. Her TED Talk is on coronavirus. It's excellent, and we'll put the link in our description below. Future Crunch is taking this time of social distancing to really test our adaptability quotient. Haven't heard about adaptability quotient yet? Come on over to our website and let us tell you all about it. It's kind of our big thing at the moment. But basically, in a bid to be more flexible in these trying times, we're starting by developing more digital content so that you guys can still come and see us even when we can't come out to see you. And it's a resource that we may well need long into the future. As Alana points out, as humans and animals continue to compete for space in this warming world, zoonotic diseases are going to have more chances to make the leap from pangolins to people. There, hopefully you feel more intelligent but I also want to remind you how to feel more optimistic. We might be a pack of animals, but we are also kind, resilient and resourceful, even in this time of coronavirus. People quarantined in Italy are singing to one another from their balconies so that people don't suffer too much in their social isolation. And an Italian startup company 3D printed 100 essential valves for respirator machines and then donated them to their struggling hospitals. Symphony orchestras, theatres, zoos, art galleries and universities are all live streaming their subjects for free for you, their new digital audience. A primary school class in Japan recreated their cancelled graduation ceremony by gathering inside the online game Minecraft and built as an assembly hall for themselves. And children in Wuhan discovered that if they gave enough one-star reviews for their homework app, it'd get removed from the app store. Stay informed, stay kind, and wash your hands.